Alan, could you just go ahead and, and tell everybody who you are personally and then let everyone know about your fitness life and your uh, your strongman gym? Okay, yeah. Uh, my name is Alan Thrall. Uh, I live in Sacramento, California, and I'm the owner of a strongman gym called Untamed Strength. Growing up, I was always uh, involved in sports, anything from track and field, uh, football, to uh, long-distance running. And uh, a few years out of high school, I decided to join the Marine Corps. And uh, during my time in the Marine Corps, uh, I served as uh, presidential security, where I was stationed in Washington, D.C., and Camp David. Um, and from there, I was sent to a uh, group of Marines, a very small group of Marines of 10 to 15 guys, uh, where we were what was called the World Famous Body Bears. And we were Paul Bears at uh, Arlington National Cemetery. So we conducted funerals and carried caskets all day. Um, and uh, during my time in the Marine Corps, I was in the gym quite a bit, just based off the, the duties that I was assigned. Um, and I really, I met a few guys that I really, uh, really showed me how to train with the barbell, train intelligently. And uh, I really got into powerlifting while I was in the Marine Corps. And uh, uh, strongman also, uh, one of the guys kind of introduced me to strongman. And I found out that uh, there were amateur strongman competitions all over North America. And uh, so I did my first one with one of my roommates and fell in love with it. Um, and during my time in the Marine Corps, I had a lot of time to uh, think to myself uh, what I wanted to do when I got out. And, uh, you know, opening a strongman gym was pretty clear uh, as, as far as what I wanted to do. So when I got out, I hit the ground running and I, I started on 10 strength. Um, and I, I opened in uh, September of 2013. And so here I am now. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I, th I think it's really interesting to have a, a strongman gym, you know, something that specific in that niche. Uh, it's really interesting. And, and I came across your uh, YouTube channel originally. Uh, and, you know, right. like on YouTube, it's Alan Thrall. And you basically put up videos of uh, mostly, you know, like sh like strongman training. And you give a lot of tips and advice. And you have a website. It's it's trainuntamed.com, correct? Right. And it looks like, I mean, you can tell me more about that. It looks like you offer some uh, some online you know, training and coaching. Obviously, it's uh, the homepage for your gym itself, and you post lots of uh, tips and articles. I actually was just was just looking over some of your articles, and you know, it's really good, really good, kind of like niche advice. Like I was saying, I, I saw one article where you're uh, you were speaking about uh, ankle position when you're doing squats, you know, and how that right. can, how you know you you need to really work on your ankle strength and ankle position, and how that helps, especially when you're doing your, your, your deep squats. And you really went into some detail and, and how to work on uh, fixing that and some uh, some physical therapy for it. Uh, you know, it's really really cool advice, really good advice. And uh, you know, obviously, it's just one of those things that a lot of people it can help a lot of people out in a lot of different ways, especially with the strongman events uh, that you're specializing in. But uh, yeah, go ahead if you don't mind and talk a little bit about you know everything that you're doing with the uh, the, the the brand, I guess, Untamed Strength in your gym and your your, your website and everything because uh, like it's that's like the, the reason that, that 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 drew me to you was because it's so niche to have a strongman gym. It's really interesting to see you know how how you're evidently you know coaching and training a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, when I originally opened Untamed Strength, it wasn't branded as a strongman gym only uh it was strongman was uh, involved in the gym but it was kind of just I, I really didn't know i really didn't have a uh a, a purpose or a direction to where i wanted to take it and uh you know even after all the the marketing books that i had read about starting your own business that you need to uh, identify yourself and make it clear to your market or who you're targeting um, i still really didn't follow that at first and uh uh, business sucks. And, uh, so I eventually kind of started running with, uh, the strongman only. It was just a strongman gym. And, uh, once I did that, it kind of took off from there. Um, and, you know, now it's obvious to me that, um, I live in California and there are commercial gyms everywhere. There are CrossFit gyms everywhere. Um, there's, uh, kind of boot camp training, uh, in the park everywhere. Uh, but there are no strongman gyms. So, uh, it's really, really obvious to people what they're getting into when they come here. Um, the people who come to the gym uh, are looking for strongman. So it's really uh, working for me right now. Um, you know, they'll Google strongman in Sacramento, and I'm the person that comes up because I'm the only one. Um, so 
uh, yes, as far as marketing goes, uh, really finding a niche of strong man really, really helps. Um, and, you know, I'm not doing it just for marketing purposes or business purposes. I really, really love strong man. Um, so, so it, it works out. Um, as far as the, the YouTube videos go, YouTube videos go, they're not, they're not real targeted towards strong man. Um, you know, when I originally made them, I thought I'd, I'd figure I'd make a how-to video for each main lift, bench, squat, deadlift, no red press. And uh, so a lot of people who follow me online, uh, you know, the clients that I work with online, they don't really, they don't even know that Unsafe Strength is a strong man gym. Um, so, you know, they, they, uh, they're surprised when they hear that, you know, what's strong man? Even though they watch all my videos, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of strong man in it. Um, and it's, it's kind of funny, the other side of that, a lot of the members of my gym who are here for strongman, you know, when they find out that I make YouTube videos, they're kind of like, you do? You know, because they don't, they don't, uh-huh. you know, so it's both sides, two different uh, crowds. But uh, that's, that's interesting. Uh, personally, that's I kind of think that, what's that? Oh, I said that's, that's really interesting that a lot of the people at your gym don't even know. You have, uh, you know, yeah, a, yeah. A, a fair amount uh, of subscribers on YouTube. You know, it seems like you get, you know... A, quite a few views on your videos and I've watched a lot of them, you know, I really like the info that that's funny that they're not even, some of them, like you said, aren't even aware. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there are happened a handful of people who came in and, uh, you know, some of them signed up just because I've seen my YouTube videos. A lot of people, um, schedule one time personal training sessions, you know, I'm in Sacramento. Can you come help me out? Um, uh, but as far as the members go, they just know me as Alan. I just have this little strongman gym. They don't really know that I, make these YouTube videos. Um, but I kind of think it works for me because I um, opened up my audience a little bit on YouTube to be, because, uh, you know, there's people from all around the world who want to know uh, how they can perfect their squat. Uh, not too many people who want to know how to flip a tractor tire or how to pick up an Um uh, So I really open up the audience when I just put out the kind of broad uh, tips on, on basic lifting. And then I started incorporating some strongman uh how to videos in there so yeah you're right so that's cool. although i gotta tell you yeah. i think i'd love to see a video on how to lift a, one of those huge rocks yeah yeah i uh i should i should make one i would love to see a video of you know how to do some of these specific strongman events you know i think that would be really just if anything interesting to watch yeah yeah absolutely yeah i've got a whole list of uh how to videos that i have uh, in my in my head that I want to put into action, but it's um, slowly but surely I'm getting them out there um, just because I'm I'm so busy with uh, this gym. You know, the members here are, you know, the number one priority. Um, and then I just started doing uh, online training and programming, so that takes quite a bit of time. So, uh, yeah, the, I, I wish there was a, a couple more of me so I can make more of those videos to help others out. But, you know, eventually, keep your eyes out, and eventually they'll be out there. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Hey, I wanted to ask you, when you were talking about, you said that you were, when you were in the Marines, you, did you say that you were on the presidential security? Is that what you said? Yeah, I worked in uh, Washington, D.C., and I was, origin- I was uh, my first actual duty station was uh, Camp David, just outside of Washington, D.C. Oh, wow. So that was literally yeah. presidential security. I didn't know that outside of the uh, Secret Service, that the military you know, played a role in security as well with the president. Right. The military does a lot more of a uh, presidential uh, kind of base uh, guarding where secret service does uh, deals with him individually. So yeah, that uh, makes we sense. kind of guard the area. They would guard him. So. Okay. That makes sense. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. That was a great experience. Let's get into your one fitness tip. And, okay. you know, we always do this with every guest And basically, it's just uh, one really good piece of advice that you can give the listeners that is maybe something that they wouldn't normally hear anywhere. And and it's, you know, uh, it can either be super, super ultra specific, or maybe it's just such a broad piece of advice, you know, that can kind of, you know, help everyone in general. But whatever it is, um, go ahead and let everybody know about your one fitness tip, Alan. Okay. Uh, I've got all kinds of tips I could give, but I think. One that I think most people will benefit from is to uh, incorporate barbell squats into your routine at least twice a week. Um, personally, I think that the, the barbell squat is the most productive thing you can do in the gym. 
Uh, I don't think anything else makes you uh, can make you stronger, more explosive, and more athletic, uh, and on and on and on. But uh, I've realized that you know with these videos that I make, uh, a lot of people are interested in learning how to squat or perfecting their squat. My, my how to squat video has the most views, the most feedback. Um, I get uh, Facebook messages every day from people who are asking about their squats. Uh, I get emails every day of people sending me videos. Um, hey, my squat sucks. It's always sucked. Can you help me out? I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um, my squat never gets better, you know, this and that. And uh, when I ask to look at their routine, what they normally do in the gym, uh, it usually resembles a typical kind of bodybuilding routine that you would find in a, a muscle and fitness magazine. It's, you know, day one is chest. Day two is back and biceps. Day three is shoulders. Day four, legs which may or may not include squats, and then, you know, day five arms. And, uh, you know, I tell them, like, do you not see how lopsided this program is? You know, you spend so much time on your upper body, uh, and you completely neglect squats. Um, it's no wonder that your squat sucks. You know, you need, if you want to get your squat better, you really have to practice it. So doing it, doing two or three sets of squats once a week or once every other week is not going to help your squat. So you, you really need to do it more frequently. Um, and a lot of people kind of have this knee-jerk reaction to it. Like, you want me to squat more than once a week? Like, there's some rule against squatting more than once a week. Um, so I, I know that there are programs out there um, that incorporate squats more than more than once a week. But the majority of people that I work with kind of do the bodybuilding routine of once a week, um, you know, maybe not even doing squats, doing leg press. And uh, so I tell them, you, you've got to practice you've got to do it more frequently if you want to get better at it um and i think even on top of that um, a lot of the guys that i deal with are very uh they're they're beginners so they uh they don't have a real they're not very strong they're uh, usually pretty small quote-unquote hard gainers um and they're interested in getting bigger and getting stronger and uh you know i tell them which do you think will create more of a demand or more of a stimulus to grow, uh, you know, a 200-pound barbell or these 15- and 20-pound dumbbells that you keep messing around with? Um, you know, they'll do, they'll do bicep curls with these, these small plastic dumbbells and lateral raises so their arms feel like they're going to fall off, but it's not doing a whole lot to, making them, to get them bigger and stronger. You know, I tell them a, a 100- or 200-pound barbell is going to create the stimulus. It's going to your body's going to adapt and get bigger and shut that. Squats, squats are intimidating. Um, putting the weight on your back, sitting down as low as you can and standing up, um, it's, it just, you know, makes sense that they're not very popular in commercial gyms. But um, I tell them, do more squats, do them more frequently, um, do them for high reps, and uh, watch what happens. So that would be my tip. Do squats, barbell squats, uh, at least twice a week. Yeah, I think... That's really good advice. It seems like a lot of the uh, the the heavyweight movements are kind of making a comeback. I don't know why that is, yeah, but um, yeah, you know, I've done the bodybuilding style of training for um, gosh, maybe close to fifteen years now, and that's just what I've always done. But it's funny because I I have so much knowledge, but you can never stop learning. I, I learned something new constantly and I've recently gotten into some, uh, heavier lifting and heavier compound movements and really focused on my deadlifts and squats. I'm not quite doing any Olympic lifts and I'm not quite doing any strongman type of lifts, but just more of the compound movements. Even with my bench press, I've focused on doing more of the, uh, the competition style press where, you know, you get a little, you know, you really set your legs underneath you and get a little more of an arch in your back and you almost have a, uh, a closer grip, you know, when you're pushing with down with your elbows together, you know, just, just better form in general and focusing on strength. Right. And I'm having a blast. Like I, I love it. You know, my strength is going up and it's made it so much more fun going in the gym. And, you know, now I'm even thinking about, uh, you know, I don't, I'm never going to get into power lifting or, or Olympic lifting or strongman events, but, you know, trying to find a, a, a good place to train, um, where they focus on more of those, those type of movements, you know, and even with CrossFit, it's a little different, but you know, they definitely do a lot of compound movements. I've even thought of just exploring CrossFit. I've never done that before. Um, but you know, just kind of expanding my horizons and, and 
like you just said about the advice about squats, you know, I think so many people that go to gyms really are caught up in just what you read in most of the magazines, which is mostly bodybuilding, which is great on its own. But there's a, right. you can really take things to a new level by focusing on, uh, a lot of the, sh the, sh the strength training compound movements, even, you know, like I said, I, f I feel like I'm very knowledgeable, and, but I'm constantly learning. And I recently just learned that, you know, a great way to, to build up your, your bicep strength and size is just by doing really heavy back exercises. You know, it like if you're doing a bodybuilding yeah, style of training, when you work out your biceps, on, on like a bicep day or whatever, you know, you're really just focusing on that small muscle and kind of uh, carving it out and, you know, almost like an, almost like training it like an accessory. But if you want to get the big strength and size, you know, you'll, you're probably going to get that with your biceps through your back day, you know, big, heavy back rows and, and deadlifts, you know, well, you're not really using your biceps as much with deadlifts, but you know, those big, heavy rows and machines like that are not machines, but, um, uh, you know, whether you're doing, uh, pull ups, pull downs, you know, this, those different exercises, if you can go really, really heavy with a good form, of course, but, you know, it's just things like that, that had, I'd never really even crossed my mind before, you know, how much just getting stronger and focusing on a lot of strength with good form, of course, and being safe, but it really enhances everything. Yeah. It kind of goes along with, uh, what I was saying, you know, if you want to, if you want to build bigger biceps, a heavy barbell doing heavy barbell rows. It's going to put more of a demand on your body than, you know, 20 pound plastic dumbbells. You know what I mean? So, uh, it, it does make a lot of sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love that. I, I love the idea of, uh, just like you said, you know, having a strong man specific type of gym and type of training. I think it's just really cool for people and it gives everyone options, you know, out there that, you know, everyone has their own body type and their own interests and, in, and in what they want to do. It just really creates more options for everybody. Um, Alan, I'm going to get into the next question and, and just kind of talk about any failures or struggles that you've had in your, your fitness career or, you know, getting into a training or strongman or anything like that. Any setbacks or struggles? I mean, obviously, as far as me individually, uh, as training and competing, um, obviously I've had, uh, you know, a handful of injuries. Um, but I'd kind of like to talk more about the, uh, uh, the business part of it. Um, anyone who's owned a business or, uh, been a part of owning a small business knows the struggles that come with it. Um, so, you know, I've faced a lot of the struggles that a, uh, a business owner has faced, um, you know, starting out, um, you would think, you know, I create this awesome gym and everyone comes running, but that's not the case. Um, so there were times when I first opened up <clears throat> that, uh, <clears throat> I'd go two or three days at the gym, um, and nobody would come in, you know, it was just an empty gym. And, uh, the only people that I ever did see were, you know, maybe my brothers or, uh, family and friends that were, you know, pretty much just showing into the gym to, you know, cause it felt bad to me probably. I don't know, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, it kind of puts a lot of doubt in your mind to, uh, was this a good idea? Should I continue doing this? Um, you know, w I don't know what I'm going to do from here. Um, maybe this is a bad idea. All those kind of doubt creeping in your mind. But, uh, I've realized that if you just continue to do something, you never remain idle. You just keep moving forward um, and you just keep doing something, whether or not uh, it's going to work or not. Um, it, that doesn't matter. Just keep doing something to move forward. Um, I think if you put enough effort in, you do everything that you can, everything that you know you can do, I think everything else will fall into place. Um, and that can be applied to a business owner, but as well as just, someone uh, who's not seeing the results they're seeing in the gym. You know, they, a lot of people go into the gym and after a few weeks, they're not where they want to be or they're not, uh, uh, things aren't working out for them and they just give up. Um, but I'm telling you, if you just do as much as you can and you know deep within your heart that you're doing everything you can do to move forward, things will fall into place. Um, so uh, just keep moving forward, I guess. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there's there's really no such thing as overnight success. I mean, any sort of success or, you know, even gaining experience, just, it just comes with time and it takes a while, you know, to, to get anything, you know, really good going, whether that's business wise or, or physically is the, the gym going so far. You've said you started in 2013. Um, 
has it has it grown like you thought it would? Are you happy with everything, or are you planning on uh, doing you know expanding, or how how is that going? Uh, it's going great. I'm uh, extremely happy with it. Um, from you know, well, like I said, where it was when I first opened, it was like that for quite a while um, uh, to where nobody was coming in, and I figured I've just got to keep doing something to move forward. Um, I've got this big empty gym to myself, so I might as well start making videos um, and. You know, making these videos uh, has definitely helped um, spread the word of Untamed Strength. So uh, people have been coming in and asking about the gym, scheduling one-time personal training sessions. Um, I make a little bit of money uh, by making those videos, the ads on the videos. Um, and uh, that obviously was the uh, selling point for my online training. So everyone that I have through on, that I coach through online training right now is from those videos. So, you know, I, I didn't know when I was creating these videos that they were going to do anything for me, but they really have. Um, and, uh, you know, I, another thing I, I figured I'd do when I was sitting in the gym by myself and nobody in here, I said, uh, I said, what can I do to try to get the word out? And I, I knew that, uh, I had competed in strongman competitions through an organization for North American strongman. And so I said, why don't I just host my own competition? And, uh, I did that in the first competition. There were, uh, some around 30 competitors. I did another one in uh, uh, January, and there were over 50 competitors and probably over 100 spectators. Um, and those doing those competitions really obviously show people, hey, there's a strongman gym in Sacramento. And uh, from that, a lot of people have been coming in. And uh, anyone who's been to my gym knows it's not a it's not a big gym. It's really tiny, so um, I can't handle a lot of people. But right now, I'm at I'm at uh, maximum as far as how many people I can sit in here, um, which is, I think, a good problem to have. So, uh, you know, my gym is about as many members as I really want right now. Um, but, you know, my lease ends at the end of this year, and uh, I'm definitely looking for a bigger and better location. I've learned a lot uh, with this gym, um, a lot of what not to do and a lot of what I should do. So uh, I'm going to take that to my next location and grow from there. Um, so it's it's definitely I'm definitely where I I wanted to be a year ago and you know I, now I have even bigger and better things that I plan on doing so um, I'm doing well I really am. That's good to hear. You know that must be a really good feeling to have a place of your own like that and have you know all these people that are you know that are basically like minded individuals and you know you're sort of a leader of of sorts and you know you kind of have your own group that you've helped create and they're and they're and they're all yours and they're and they're there in one place you know on a daily basis that has got to be a really cool feeling yeah absolutely okay alan uh next we're going to get into your motivational quote so if you could just share um uh, share your motivational quote that that you really like and that could give a little bit of inspiration to the listeners okay um the the theme that i've been running with kind of is more of a uh, business type theme uh just because i'm I'm a strongman gym owner, but I mean, really, anything that you can apply in life, uh, apply to life, business can be applied to the gym. So, uh, but anyways, this quote uh, is from uh, George Bernard Shaw and goes, uh, "A life spent making mistakes is not only more honorable but more useful than a life spent doing nothing." Um, and I, I really think that a lot of people, and myself included, years ago, uh, were really paralyzed by fear of failure. Um, we're really afraid to do what our heart's telling us to do. Um, and, you know, I, don't, I think that the day when we're on our deathbeds, I don't think we're going to regret those risks that we took. Um, I don't think we're going to regret pursuing our dreams, uh, you know, and the failures along the way. I think we're going to regret the risks that we didn't take. Um, we're going to regret sitting at that sitting at that desk for the majority of our life and that job that we hate um, just because we, you know, wanted that steady paycheck. Um, so uh, anyways, I'd, I'd much rather get out there, scrape my knees and, you know, fall flat on my face and mess everything up, uh, you know, doing what I wanted to do than uh, be told what to do and always wonder what would have happened if I would have done this or I would have done that. So. Yeah, I I agree. I like that quote. You know, there's a there's a very similar quote I think from Mark Twain, and I, I don't remember it word for word, but he but the quote basically says when you're when you grow old and you look back on your life, 
you never regret the decisions that you that you made, but you'll regret the ones that you didn't make. Um, exactly. And you know, I've I've always thought about that, and uh, you know, it makes a lot of sense. And you know, you don't ever want to be someone who you know, like you said, you get paralyzed by fear of uh, you know trying whatever it is that you want to you want to try out in life, and it just seems like it's so overwhelming that you you can't you can't achieve it, or or, or you know you you have a fear of failure. You know, it's always that could potentially be one of those things that you would look back on and regret that you didn't make that decision. So I, I really like that quote. Yeah, absolutely. And now we're going to get into your tough scenario. It's kind of a cheesy thing that I do. I ask every guest, uh, I try to create some sort of a tough scenario for them. And for you, since you have a strongman gym and you're a, you're a Marine, so I'm sure you're uh, you can get very creative in a, uh, in a, in any kind of a situation. Um, your, your scenario was, let's say that you want to train to do strongman type competitions, but you have no equipment at home and you lack a decent gym within a hundred miles. So basically, you know, you, it's a struggle to find a place to go pick up heavy things and put them back down. Um, any creative ideas on how you would start that if you wanted to get into that kind of training, but had very little, um, very little assets on, on, on how to actually start it? What would you do, Alan? Okay. Well, to clarify now, does this individual have no equipment at all, no barbell, no weights, or do they not have strongman equipment? Are they they literally have nothing? Because it can be done either way, but yeah. I just kind of want to know. Well, you're the expert on that. Um, obviously, you know they have no sort of you know stereotypical training equipment like barbells and dumbbells. But you know I don't know what all you could use for strongman. So. You know, you're the expert on that. So let's just assume that. Okay. Where maybe they have to, maybe you got to build your own equipment. I don't know. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, first off, I think a big uh, misconception a lot of people have about strongman is that all we do is strongman events. So all we do are you know Atlas stone loads and uh, uh, tire flips and stuff like that. Uh, when in reality, eighty percent. I would say I'm just throwing out a number here, but about eighty percent of our training is uh, basic barbell movements, squats, overhead press, deadlifts. Um, and a very small percentage of it is actual strongman events, um, picking up those big stones, flipping tires, and things like that. Um, so I think that if you have a barbell and weight and you want to compete in strongman down the road, you need to get really good at deadlifting, picking weight up off the ground, and you need to get really good at pressing weight overhead um, so if you have a really strong deadlift and a really strong overhead press and i would go i would also say you need to get good at weighted carries so picking something up and walking with it for a long distance whether it's a uh, farmer's walk uh, carrying a, a stand bag carrying a keg carrying a rock doesn't really matter but you need to get good at deadlifting pressing weight overhead and carrying something um, now if you didn't have and if you didn't have a barbell or weights, um, you can make a lot of the equipment uh, at home. Um, you don't have to, those perfectly round, smooth stones that are called Atlas stones, um, you don't have to make those. You can, you can find a natural stone out in the field, uh, and you can, you can lift that. You can try to press that overhead. Um, as far as tractor tires, um, if you just look around for a, tractor tire depot, kind of like a tractor uh, junkyard, a lot of the times these guys that own these places can't sell those tires because they have holes in them, the tread's worn down, so they have no use for them. So usually they'll let them take, you off, take it off their hands for free. Um, and uh, as far as uh, sandbags, I mean, you can just find, you can get a backpack, really, just any, anything that'll hold sand, fill it up with sand, and you can do all kinds of training with that. Um, I'll throw in um, a reference for anyone looking to uh, get into strongman. Um, Starting strongman is uh, uh, run by a guy named Kale Beck, and he has all sorts of uh, videos online. Uh, if you follow him on Facebook, Instagram, um, it is a website and information source for anyone looking to start strongman. I um, mean, he ha he actually has an article on there, a number of articles about how to how to train strongman without strongman equipment. Um, so I think that's a, a, a great resource. Uh, and I, I'll go even further. Anyone listening to this who says, how in the world do I sign up for a strongman competition? Where are they? Um, if you go to 
North American Strongman. If you Google that in, I think the website the website is uh, nastrongman.com. Um, they have a whole list of amateur strongman competitions all, all over North America. Uh, that's that's where I did my first competition. Um, that's where I currently do the competitions I do, and that's uh, also the organization that I host the competitions here at Untamed Strength. Um, so, anyways, there's those two uh, resources you could use. Wow, that's really great information because I know that there's undoubtedly going to be some people that that listen to this that you know are interested in strong men and uh, and even for myself, I would I would just think. Gosh, how do I even begin to train for strongman? You know, I mean, I wouldn't even know where to start. And just by you saying that, you know, a lot of the basic uh, barbell movements, you know, like uh, squats and deadlifts and, and uh, overhead presses, you know, can really build up a lot of that base strength for strongman. I wouldn't have even thought of that. And uh, yeah, I think there's definitely going to be some people that will be checking out strongman, visiting those sites, and and you know, starting some training because, like you said, a lot of the Atlas Stones and and you know, if anyone's watched. Um, some of the strongman events that they used to show on ESPN, do they still show those anymore? The world's strongest man competition? Yeah, they do. Um, I haven't seen they, one in a uh, while. I don't have TV anymore. So <laughs> it's a, yeah, I don't think they played on e- ESPN. They played on uh, CBS sports. Uh-huh. Uh, but you also, you can also find it online to where you can kind of live stream these, uh, these competitions. Um, but, but with that, I want, I want everyone to know, and I want you to know if you're not real familiar, uh, these strongman competitions I talk about, these amateur strongman competitions, uh-huh. uh, they are not limited to uh, these 400-pound, seven-foot-tall monsters that you see on ESPN or CBS Sports. Um, they truly are amateur strongman competitions. There's there's uh, people from all walks of life at these, these amateur competitions. They actually have uh, a 175 class for men, so uh, anyone weighing less than 175 pounds competes in that class. So there, uh, there's no height or weight requirement. Um, so it's uh, don't be intimidated. There's all types of people that compete in these competitions. You know, and I saw some some videos online of you and I guess your team in some competitions, and it looked more like a. Uh, it I don't know if it was even a strongman competition. You were doing squats, deadlift, and bench, which I guess is a typical powerlifting competition. I mean, I may be wrong, but do you, do you compete in those types also? Yeah, that was a powerlifting competition. Uh, uh-huh. There are also videos of there of myself and a few of the ladies that train here um, doing a uh, strongman competition. It was more of a strength challenge, but uh, usually all the competitions involve uh, some event where you press weight overhead or press an object overhead, um, some event where you pick something off the floor, you deadlift something, or and another event where you uh, carry something, farmer's walks, uh-huh. sandbags, kegs. So, yeah, the... Uh, the bench squat deadlift with a barbell is, is powerlifting, but uh, strongman is a little different. It's a little, I think it's a little more exciting to watch. Yeah, you know, I just, just when you mentioned the women, it just popped in my head. Uh, speak about that for a second. You know, how do the ladies that you train? How, how do how do they like it? You know, I guess automatically when you think of strongman, you know, you you typically don't think of a lot of women do, uh, women doing that type of training. But um, how are the women uh, having a go at it? How, how are they enjoying it? Oh, they, they absolutely love it. Um, you know, obviously there's a big misconception that I think is being, uh, uh, you know, put to rest lately that women, uh, you know, shouldn't lift heavy and this and that, whatever. Um, uh, personally, I don't think women should train really any differently than men should. Um, and, uh, they really, they really love it. They, uh, they love coming here and lifting heavy weights and, uh, constantly impressing themselves because they used to be, in that trap of thinking that they had to do run on a treadmill for an hour, do some stupid abdominal exercises, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but you should see their face light up when they uh, pick up a 150 pound Atlas stone or they, uh, you know, flip a 400 pound tractor tire. Uh, so they love it just as much as the, the men do. Um, it's a lot of fun. And the women get uh, extremely competitive at the competitions, but they're also extremely supportive of each other. Um, and it is, it's a lot of fun to watch the women compete. But yeah, the women here love it. It's a lot of fun to, to work with them. That would be a lot of fun to watch. It'd be a lot, lot of fun to, to train strongman with women. Now that I think about it, oh yeah, you know, and like you were yeah, saying absolutely. about a lot of women don't do strength training. Um, you know, that I think that should totally change because you know, not only is it such a great, uh, such a great, you know, part of overall fitness is enhancing your strength, but 
you know, I think a, the, the stereotype is a lot of women are probably afraid of getting big and bulky. Um, and it's just not going to happen. The, the way I see it is if, and this, this applies to men as well, but if you don't want to get really, really big, you will be able to stop before you get there. Trust me, because it takes a long time. You know, it's, it's not like it's going to happen over two month period and you're going to wake up one day and be like, Oh my gosh, I'm big and bulky and muscular now, you know? And that goes for the women as well. Like, it's you know the, the women don't have enough testosterone in their body compared to men anyway, so it's much more difficult for them to build like you know as much bulk. But um, either way, for men and women, it's just not going to happen overnight. You you will definitely be able to stop yourself along the line if you, you finally get to the point where you don't want to get you know any any larger. So um, that should never deter anyone from from lifting weights. You know, uh, doing strongman, doing powerlifting, doing these these heavy compound movements. You know, it's actually a lot of fun. I, and you know, there's probably you probably know more about it than me, but there's a lot of science behind you know the the release of endorphins and just how much it it helps you know your mind you know just by being able to do these heavy exercises as opposed to like most people sitting in an office all day. You know, it's just it's a great it's a great primal release, I would assume. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's uh, you know one thing that I really hate about commercial gyms is you that they're so crammed and they're so uh, nice and pretty that you can't get in there and. Uh, release some of that rage, you know, you can't throw things around, you can't run around. Um, so it's, it's really, uh, yeah, not, a, not a huge fan of it, but going off of what you were saying about the, uh, the women and, you know, not, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, uh, it's a really great way to put it. Um, when you see these, these enormous, uh, women, these bodybuilder women, um, that doesn't happen from just, you know, strength training, you know, it's a, that's a lot of, it's a huge calorie surplus in their diet. Um, a lot of supplementation. Um, so there's a lot of things that go into it. It's not just lifting heavy weights, you know. So um, if I can help uh, educate women, you know, and show, hey, check out these women that train in my gym. Um, you know, they don't look like freaks, you know, and they're really strong. Um, then, you know, I'm glad I can help out. Um, and I think any, any, uh, any female that says she doesn't want to be strong or is not interested in being strong has never actually been strong. You know, once once you deadlift, you know, 200 pounds or 300 pounds, or like I said, once you flip a 400 pound tractor tire, uh, you're going to be hooked, and you're going to want to you're going to want to get even stronger. So I think someone who says they don't want to be strong has probably never been strong. So yeah, I totally agree. And and I've I've always kind of wondered this. You know, um, with the smaller petite women, you know, obviously it's just just like uh, with men, you know, that the smaller you are, strength is sort of relative to your size, you know, for the most part. And, um, you know, so typically a, a bigger, bulkier, heavier person is going to be stronger. You know, that's not always true because you see bodybuilders and what they focus on is hypertrophy, which is growing the muscles visually larger. Uh, with a lot of strength training, Olympic lifting, powerlifting, strongman, it's all about strength. So that doesn't necessarily, so, you know, a lot of these guys, um, you know, that, that, that do some sort of strength training will be way stronger than a bodybuilder, but just not quite as bulky. It's a different type of training. But something I've always wondered with women is, um, some women like that, let that say are naturally bigger, um, you know, maybe heavy set, and, you know, it's really hard for them to get motivated to, to lose a lot of weight and trim down. And they're comparing themselves to these really petite women, and I've always wondered, like, why don't they get into some sort of gym or some sort of training where they're doing strength training? You know, because those girls are naturally bigger anyways. They have more weight on them. Uh, they're, you know, they can definitely get in shape and, 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 and you know, get, get more fit and all that. But just their size alone gives them a strength advantage. And I would think, man, that would probably make them feel so much better about themselves and about training if they got into some sort of a strength training regimen because you know that they would automatically have an advantage from the get-go absolutely absolutely i uh i've trained a few uh you know a little bit bigger women who uh in the past have trained at other gyms or with other trainers or um and other uh crossfit gyms and uh this isn't a shot at crossfit but uh um crossfit at times can be so fast-paced that you know the bigger the bigger women are usually kind of the outcast, you know, they don't do as well. They're kind of put over in the corner because their strength is, or their, uh, their work capacity or their ability to do everything is not as great. Uh, but when they, they come in here, uh, and they can lift all this weight, they kind of, 
they start to shine a bit. You know, they're on top now. Uh, and uh, so they uh, they really love it, and it, it gets them coming back. So they really want they look forward to going to the gym now. Um, and it's more of a uh, a hobby, something they're looking forward to, rather than a punishment. Like you know, oh, you know, I I, I don't want to, but I really got to go to the gym. You know, I got to lose some weight, this and that. Um, so I think they really enjoy um, lifting weight and uh, really exposes some of their you know their strengths. So uh, and it's great. Um, but uh, with that, uh, strongman is not only a big woman's sport or a big man's sport. Um, the the beauty of strongman is that most events uh, or most competitions have completely different events. So some of them involve a lot of static strength, where you would do a heavy deadlift. You deadlift as much as you can. Where uh, you know the bigger people might excel at that, uh, but there are other events where they are moving events. So you have to pick this weight up, take it down 100 feet, sprint back, take this weight down here, do this and that, run all over the place. And the uh, so you do have to be athletic. Um, so that you know the smaller guys or the uh, ones that aren't as strong can really excel in that. Um, so there, there's a good balancing uh, in strongman. Yeah, and you said there's weight classes as well, right? There's weight classes as well, yeah. And that really helps out. You know, it's just like uh, a lot of a lot of professional sports, like uh, professional mixed martial arts, you know, it's it's categorized by weight class, you know. So that really that really levels the playing field and it gives people like, you know, there's 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 guys that are that that fight at say 125 pounds weight class and you know you've got world champions at that weight class and they're the some of the best fighters in the world and they're very athletic and you know they're able to compete on a level playing field but if you know let's say 25 years ago 20 years ago with mixed martial arts in its infancy there were no weight classes so that same 125 pound man today that's a champion that has lots of success would you know would not have that same sort of success against a 250 pound guy you know so i mean people you're you're right you know people have to take like like the weight classes in, into account and uh like you said with with strongman it's for everyone of every size you know you can you know you shouldn't be discouraged if if you are you know either really really large or you're really small and tiny you know you can just you can find your weight class and compete with uh people that are basically at your, you know at your uh at your level you know on a level playing field and that is actually exactly. something I did not know much about because I'd always associated it with you know these big giant seven foot tall you know people from Iceland and you know, doing those yeah. uh, events on television, you know, and I never really thought about the different weight classes. So you've actually, you know, I've learned, that's just one new thing I've learned from you just in this conversation. I never, that had never even occurred to me. Uh-huh. They also have uh, ability levels. They'll have a novice class. So anyone who's competing for the first time, regardless of your body weight, uh, can go into the novice class. So you would compete against other first timers. So that's really cool too. Yeah, that actually sounds really, really fun. I, I'm going to have to look, and you said, you know, go to uh, North American Strongman, and we'll post all of these uh, websites and links um, on untoldfitness.com. It'll be on this this podcast article. But yeah, I'm actually I'm actually interested in looking that up and seeing if there's going to be anything, you know, near my area. Um, it just sounds fun. Yeah, you're you're calling from Tennessee, right? I am, uh-huh, Chattanooga. Yeah, there's, uh, there's all kinds of competitions in that on the East coast, more so than the West coast. So yeah, wow. you're, you're bound to find something. That is so cool. Yeah. I'm definitely going to look into that. Um, well, you know, we, we try to keep these things fairly short and, um, if there's anything else you want to spread the word on, just let us know. And if you want to, uh, let the listeners know, you know, how you can be found online, uh, where your gym is, anything that you're excited about in the future, and you can give out, um, all of your social media and et cetera. And, um, just, and also talk about anything else that, that we've, that we might've missed, Alan. Okay. Um, I think we pretty much covered it. Um, it was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. Uh, uh, again, my name is Alan Thrall. That's the, uh, the YouTube name is under my name, A-L-A-N, last name T-H-R-A-L-L. Uh, the gym is called Untamed Strength. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and the website is www.trainuntamed.com. The address is on there, uh, and I'm located in Sacramento, California. And like you said, you're just about at full capacity at your gym, but if there's anyone in the, the Sacramento area that, that wants to uh, start training with you, um, what, what could they do? Oh, they, when I say full capacity, uh, you know, we can definitely fit more people in here. Yep. But uh, 
Um, so yeah, I'm not uh, deterring anyone from coming in and trying it out. Um, so we, we always have room, especially on uh, Saturdays when we do all of our strongman events. Um, we take everything out of the gym and bring it out back and, uh, you know, we, we train outside. So, uh, there's definitely still room. Man, that's gotta be a lot of fun. That's gotta really mix it up as, as compared to going to a, a typical commercial gym or a, uh, or a CrossFit gym, you know, et cetera. It's more like a, oh, yeah. it reminds me more of like playing sports, you know, getting to go outside and do all these different events on a, on a fairly yeah, regular absolutely. basis. That must be a lot of fun. 